Yesterday, on the 9th of February, a Challenger 600 jet registration November 823 Kilo Delta crashed shoulder to runway in Naples Airport in Florida, with uh, both engines suddenly failed once they were cleared for a visual approach runway 24 in Naples. On short final, they did an emergency landing near the highway of I-75, which is this highway. Naples Airport is located here, and they were lined up approximately here for a visual approach, runway 24. Although the airport does have, well, runway 23, excuse me, although the airport does have RNF approaches and a VUR approach from runway 23, it seems like with the ATC recording, they did make a visual approach, and the weather was quite fine. With that, it was a little bit gusty, gusting 16 knots, but uh, mostly in the runway direction. So weather was not too bad, actually. Once they were cleared for a visual approach, pilots did make an emergency and then said that they had a dual engine failure. Then the ATC cleared them to land runway 23, but they would not make it, of course. Once you are lined up with, uh, with the runway and uh, you probably are in landing configuration with landing it down, and with the slats in landing, you have a lot of drag. There's a very small chance you can make it to the runway with that configuration with a planned three degree glide slope. And uh, you, you, will never, you will never approach in a chat like this with the mindset that if an engine fails, if, if a dual engine failure would happen, you will still want to make the runway because a dual engine failure is a very, very unlikely thing to happen in a jet like this. So they departed Ohio State Airport, which is north. It's about a two hour flight and uh, it seems like an IFR flight and they later had um, this visual approach offered to them probably. If you take a look at the track log, they were perfectly lined up with, uh, with the runway 23 with a track of 205 for visual approach and they maintained a speed, probably final configuration speed, about 115 knots. They did have a high rate of descent right around here. At my airline, this is a different different category of airline because it's an airline. This is part 135. We would not um, have that kind of descent rate at this altitude. Typical rule of thumb for my airline is that you never want to hit the ground in less than one minute. And this will be the case. I don't know where exactly the engine would have failed maintaining our 1,200 feet per minute descent rate, and then suddenly 1,800 feet per minute descent rate, which is the highest descent rate during the whole flight. And uh, the reason for that was probably that they were pitching down the jet for the best glide speed. With, with flaps full, for flaps landing, and letting it down the best glide speed, you, you will have to pitch down quite a substantial amount even in a sleek jet like this so with all the drag out with all the drag extended you would have to pitch down quite some amount so this is probably this is this the the, the ascent rate um, that the pilots initiated for the landing and unfortunately um during this whole incident or accident there were only three survivors um there were a total of five people on board the jet three passengers and two pilots unfortunately the, the pilots passed away during the impact or post-crash fire. The company is a charter company, it's called Hop Jets, and uh, they have a variety of different jets, a fleet of nine aircraft, including the Challenger 600. Um, actually, the, 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 the exact registration, November 823 Kilo Delta, I cannot find it on their website anymore. They seem to have taken down the aircraft already. Um, after the crash, but uh, this was the approximate aircraft that crashed and the company is operating on a part 135. So right now we do not have a good, a good information about why the engine has failed. The FAA will, will do their investigation and they will come up with the flight data recorder and that will shine some light on why that engine has failed, definitely. Let's take a closer look at the fuel system of the Challenger 600. From what I found on the internet, I'm not a Challenger 600 pilot, I'm an Embraer 195 pilot, but um, there are electric fuel pumps that, that are used to start up the, the aircraft, the engine, and once the engine is stabilized, the engine-driven fuel pumps will take over and they will um, eject fuel into the engine as long as the engine is turning. So, and to shut off the fuel to the engines, you have to leave up that lever, that red lever individually, 
and then cut the fuel down. So the, the most back position of the throttles is the idle position. And then behind the idle position is another detent, which is cut off, but you have to leave up those two levers to get to the cut off position. This, would, this is the only thing that would um, trigger a pilot induced shutdown of the engines. And also those little flaps, I'm guessing this is the, this is the emergency fuel shut off, um, but you have to leave up the plastic flap lever on those two to shut off the engine and this is, def this, this is definitely not what happened this is this is not something that 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 just happens it's, it's very very well secured on all aircraft and and this aircraft as well so just to open the fuel shut off valve um, or closing the throttle inadvertently when, when going idle is, is something that does not happen on those aircraft. This is a very mechanical fuel system. There's a cable connected directly to the throttle that uh, operates the fuel controller and fuel control valve to the engine. And it's all me mechanical on this aircraft. And the only electrical pump in use um, during flight is the f firewall shutoff pumps. Those are electric are triggered with, with uh, I guess, those buttons. I'm not a, a Challenger 600 ready pilot, as I said. When both engines fail simultaneously, this definitely has something either to do with a fuel, fuel contamination, fuel system, um, whatever, or maybe even starvation of fuel, because there have, some, there have, there have been some recent reports of the uh, Challenger 600 type aircraft when the tank is completely full or close to empty, there are wrong indications and misleading indications of the amount of fuel that is still in the aircraft um, given to the pilots. So that might have been a, 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 a cause fuel starvation, but, but as we stand now, we do not know anything. The other reason could be a flock of birds that might have entered into the aircraft, similar to the Hudson River incident with Captain Sully Salenberger, where there was a big, big flock of birds that killed two engines of a massive, compared to this aircraft, massive A320. And uh, that could have been an, 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 a reason as well. It's a big flock of birds that might have killed both engines at the same time. And for people saying that there was a post-crash fire when the aircraft was um, crashing onto the I-75, so there had to be still fuel in the engines, so uh, fuel salvation cannot be the issue. Well, um, with, the, with this jet, there is still about 500 pounds of fuel in the tanks once um, the uh, fuel pump loses its fuel pressure and cannot sustain a fuel flow into the engine. So there still will be some fuel remaining into the, in the engines once the engines suddenly die. The pilots did an amazing job of, of handling the situation. You would never expect a dual engine failure um, in an aircraft like this. It's very unlikely to happen on any jet aircraft with two engines. So you typically do not train to land a jet aircraft with two engines anywhere with a dual engine failure. Do not train that. With my type rating in Embraer 195, we did, we did of course train a dual engine failure and that can happen for some reason. We do have a memory items connected to that, which is deploy the ram air turbine and speed 265 knots or more. During our type rating, we always, we always made one engine work again and we did then land a single engine, which is something you train on a regular basis. But with dual engine failure, it's a very different story. You, we do not actually train that because it's so unlikely to happen. Landing with only, with with, with uh, zero engines. With a single engine piston, you're very much trained to that motion. When the engine fails, pitch down for best glide, search for something, something. do not attempt the 180 degree turn unless there is sufficient altitude. Um, but in this case, they probably would, they probably never trained for that. So, and, and to have not trained for something like that, this, and still managed to get down safely onto the I-75 and, and, and save all three passengers, that's quite a miracle. We do not know the reason why all of this happened in the first place, but the reaction of the pilots was amazing. And uh, it's very unfortunate that they died uh, in that accident. I will keep you updated on this channel, so follow me along if you want to have more information. Until the next one, stay safe.